wash it the start of envy some people are you have a problem because when somebody got something you feel bad when somebody is promoted you feel bad you have a problem if when somebody else is blessed you feel like you are reduced in fact give me a moment to talk to somebody there are some people in life who live by the scarcity mentality they believe like they, they think that blessings are short and, and they come in small pocket pockets and so if you get blessed, it means that there's less blessing for me. If you get more money, it's less for me. It's called a scarcity mentality. But too much starts in that. You gotta wash it out and come to the abundance mentality which suggests that there is enough for everyone. And so if you get blessed, there's blessing for me. You make money, I can make money too. You buy a car, there are a hundred thousand more cars that can be bought. Wash it out. Work out your salvation. Work out your salvation. What is that thing that represents stacks for you? That keeps tripping you up and making your stew taste bad. What is it that is making your stew taste bad? But for some people it's idle time. Instead of studying, you tell your parents you're on the computer or doing what? You're researching. <laughs> I don't know any college that gives you a degree. <laughs> Let the preacher rest in Jesus' name. <laughs> this one is too heavy for me. Let the brother pray for me. I don't know of any college that gives you a degree for researching people's pictures on Facebook. <laughs> you're researching. What are you doing is looking at Facebook. There's no YouTube doctorate, YouTube degree. I mean, the, the truth is you can learn a lot from YouTube, you know. But if you type garbage in, you'll get garbage out. And so you bluffing your parents, like you studying so hard. You studying hard. You studying, hey, listen. I, I'll be able to reel with you this week, is that all right? You bluffing your parents like you studying and you studying and when the grades come out yeah. and you pretending like oh, oh. <laughs> go and check the search history on your computer now huh? you've been wasting time you haven't been a diligent student listen Paul is saying when you come to Christ how you need somebody in order to reflect him you gotta wash out that lethargy you gotta wash out that waste that attitude that causes you to waste time yes. are you buying what I'm selling yeah. come on you buying what I'm selling yeah. I'm saying that when you come to Christ you got to pay attention to yourself because there's some things in you that will cause your gluten stew to taste bad. You buying what I'm selling? You sure? I remember I was in a country village one time preaching, right? And it was at a funeral. Different culture. Totally different. They weren't even people who believe in Christ the same. And there I was talking about Jesus and so on, you know, and Lazarus, it was a funeral. Totally different culture. You know we have different cultures in the end. And I was there talking about Jesus, talking, and I, Jesus was there. And after, after the funeral, a little girl came up to me and said, Pastor, well, they speak very, you know, broken. Pastor? He said, yes. I said, Pastor, you like all your hala. <laughs> you like him what I'm hollering? Come on, talk to me. You like what I'm hollering? <laughs> I am suggesting to you, and don't miss this. God decided to tell you this tonight. Yeah. That there's some things in you 
that will cause your stool to taste bad. Under the power of the Holy Spirit, discipline yourself and wash it out. Work it out. Pay attention to it. Love yourself. We got a little more journey to cover than we go at home. Let's go forward. And so, he says, work it out with fear and trembling. Are you with somebody? In other words, I told you already, shun self-confidence. Don't behave like you're right. Any man think he stands. Are you with somebody? Don't go around the thing that trips you up and think that you got over it. Are you with somebody? If you are a drug addict, stay away from drugs. Are you somebody? If you are a smoker, stay away from smoke. If you if you drink alcohol, stay away from alcohol. If you are a womanizer, stay away from. Are you with somebody? If you are a party goer, stay away from the devil and his music. Stay away. <laughs> don't don't work it out with fear and trembling. Are you with somebody? You know you have issues. Whenever you go to the computer, it it robs you of your study time. Stay off. Don't operate as if you conquer it. He says, don't listen. Work it out with fear and trembling. In other words, none of you should come here like you're brown. Like you arrive. Because there is stuff in you that can mess up your gluten too. Let's, let's bring this one down. I like this part. Let's go to the other part. <sighs> you see, Paul confuses me. He says, work out your own salvation. Catechismite. But then he comes in the next verse and says, it's God which worketh in you. Come on, Paul. Come on, Paul. Come on. I thought you were a scholar. You tell me to work it out. And when I put on my gloves to work, you come and tell me it's God working it out. And so I have to go to the Greek because it didn't make sense. You tell me work out your own salvation and, and I put on my boots and, and my gloves and, and start my weed back up. I'm ready to work. And then you come and touch me and say, um, it is God who works. What are you doing to me? So I check the Greek. He says, you have to cut the gizomai, work out. But God has to energy you. That's the Greek word. God, it is God who energy Now what does that mean? Yes! What would I do without you? Say it again. Come on, say it again. Again, put your hands together for your sister and preacher for this meeting. What would I do without you? One more time. God energizes. In other words, you get prepared to work, but you might not have the energy to work. So God comes and he will give you the energy because he said it is God you bought the desire to do yes. and the ability to do. Yes. Yes. Wow! This looks like a formula to get to heaven for me. Yes. I would be somebody. Yes. I see this as the formula to get to heaven because, listen, you might not feel like working. You have your boots, you have your gloves. You might not have the energy to work, but Paul says, God will provide the energy. Amen. How could I illustrate this? When I was in Barbados, Pastor Ambrose, have a confession. You know I'm a vicious scholar. You know that. I sell all the books out and they sell more and they sell it. Now in Barbados, I guess they didn't understand that at the time. That was my first time in that field. And so they ordered what they thought was a whole lot of books. And in a few weeks, book finished. And so the, 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 my good friend, the publisher, 
He didn't want me to do anything. He said, stay on the field, stay. I said, I don't have books. And so he went and he grabbed up some books from home and so on. A big bag of things and he brought it to me and he gave me that morning. By 10 o'clock that morning, books finished. Some of them had dust and all that and dust it off and sold them. Now, so I said, I read them, no books. He said, okay boy, we, we'll rush the shipment, probably take a day or two. I said, all right, thank you. And I went. I'm confessing now. In my free days, you know, because I mean, I'm a student, I'm in business. I went to work on a construction site. <laughs> because I was living with the contractor. And he said, All right, Marvin, Smith, do I have anything to do? Let's go to work, and I will pay you. My eyes did pay. <laughs> because students want money. Come on. Am I the only real person in this house? <laughs> and I got there. The first assignment was a whole lot of bricks I had to move. All morning I am moving bricks. Moving bricks and bricks not finishing. <laughs> he saw me and passed by and laughed. He said, I told you about the money, but I didn't tell you about the work. <laughs> And so far, I started lifting bricks, lifting bricks. And before lunch, she will finish. Yeah. Oh, Can't wait for lunch. I'm lifting bricks. Lifting bricks is a construction site. Lord of mercy. I ate something the lunch I thought I had. Probably quarter to 12 is how I eat. And I ate it. Then after that, my second assignment, he gave me a healthy. A healthy is a small jackhammer. <laughs> and I had to cut tracks around the side of a house. Are you please, somebody? Yeah. It was not high enough for me to stand. And it was not low enough for me to stoop or sit. It was halfway. <laughs> and so all afternoon, <laughs> cutting track, shaking my head on myself. <laughs> now look at this. I am there with a the jackhammer. And we have to go until 5. And I am hungry again at 2.30. <laughs> I said, I said, you know, I want to do this thing. No food. Barely made it. Went home that day, I couldn't even sleep well. In fact, when I went on the pillow, I pressed my head down, I said, this thing finish. So I put my head on the pillow, like the half the effect of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy on me. I want to work for this money. But I'm full, I'm hungry, tired. So I came up with a plan. I said, you know what? I eat a solid breakfast. And his wife was cook, a good cook. She treated me like a son. I said, I was home here yesterday, but she said, all right, all right. No. She packed lunch. She packed a big morning sack, some tuna stuff. Put you see me like a nursery school child. <laughs> Afternoon snack, I eat me some money. And I go on the side now. And we work in spade. Son, my granddaughter, I'm hungry and I said, snap back. Go to the snap back. Work again. I need some of that was my strategy. Lunchtime hungry. Lunch. 2.30, I am mid-afternoon. Go to the snap back. Choose to even put fruits. I'm looking at all the mothers on the side. Said you're trading. You're hungry. I eat, and I work too, even when over the time, you see, the food provided me with the energy oh, to complete the task. What Paul is saying, young Christian, there are some things you want to do, but you just can't do it. There are some things you want to overcome, but you just don't have the strength to overcome it. You're ready to work it out, but you don't have the energy. The worst thing a person can do is give up on God. Any person who gives up on God will not even have the desire.
desire to do good. What Paul 